Hello there, welcome Genesis Models, my name is Boy Waldron and welcome to an inbox review. We're going to be doing Airfix's 148 scale Western Lynx HMA um, 8 Mark 88A or the Mark 90 B. Right, this kit was um, new tooled in 2000, I think it was 14, uh, 14, 12, um, you know, it's about eight years old, right? This has been reboxed this year, right? We've got the nice navy version. I did do the um, the army version a couple of years back, you know, so there's a link in the description if you want to go check that out. It's a nice full um, step by step on it, right? But we're just going to touch on this a little bit because this is more of a rebox, and I've already sort of done a full inbox review of it already. Um, the price. Um, which we'll get round to later. The price is £50, right? We'll have a good moan on that at the end of this. But let's take a quick look at what we get in here. Um, if we just zoom you in, right, the surface detail, just to sort of recap on all of this, absolutely, it is, it is actually really good surface detail, I've got to admit. Um, really nice, lots of tiny little raised rivets really brings out the detail very very nicely um, all sorts of recessed panel lines yes i mean typical air fix you know they're a little bit out of scale they're a little bit bigger than you would expect um maybe a slight slight bit of fading as it wraps around that 90 degree angle some nice internal detail just here all that sort of uh, diamond shapes and everything um, really would take a wash very nicely as you'll probably see in in the the step by step I did the underside again all that lovely lovely sort of nice raised rivet work you know um, it is supposed to be raised just in case um, you, you, you're worried there a little bit but yeah lovely surface deal you know it is you know I, I do like it I mean I have built it it's very very nice um, on the inside Right, uh, we do have an ejector pin mark or two, right, which don't seem too hard to get rid of if need be, right. There is a lot of internal detail that goes inside here to sort of cover those kind of things up as well. Um, as we move along, you know, again, just more sort of detail. We've got some uh, more internal detail here again. We've got some more raised rivets just showing everything off just there, sort of like the tail section of this as well looking pretty pretty cool um yes we do have um i do believe with this one you know the instrument display panels all blanked out and we end up having um i do believe there's decals i'll have to check the decals in a bit but i do believe they are um decals um flash is not too bad actually i mean just sort of looking at it um just your standard kind of mold lines right Ooh. um Moving along as well, we have all these propellers on here. Um, I think you can have sort of like the folded configuration as well. I can't remember. We'll have to check the instructions out in a bit, right? But hopefully, as you can see, you know, generally, you know, if you want a more in-depth sort of look at the what's in here, you know, best checking out that um, that step-by-step -step, the first episode will, sh will show you. But it does look good, right? Um, the canopy side of things, all that glass parts let's hope that um, airfix hasn't messed this up all right and already i'm seeing a little sort of cobweb effect right but it does look quite shiny i'll just hold it up into the light right and it is it does look shiny but um yes just like the last one right you might be able to just see those little sort of cobweb effects go in in the um glassy areas there is another one just there i don't know if you can pick that up yeah, maybe you can get that just on camera there but there is like those cobweb effects and that's just to do with the temperature different temperatures meeting as they inject it and it leaves a little line that's into the core you can't get rid of it um, in all fairness i have built this and it's not really that noticeable so it's not that bad um, preferably you wouldn't want it there but it is there um, a quick look because i mean this is a rebox so you know generally it's the decals and stuff that really sort of 
changes, right? Um, hopefully what you can see is we do have, um, looks like a, the German version, the Royal Navy. Um, as I said, yes, we've got our instrument display panels or decals rather than actual detail. But I do believe you can get some nice sort of Eddard aftermarket um, photo etching stuff to really sort of jazz things up if you want to. Um, these decals do look top notch. I mean, Airfix is normally pretty good with their decals and they are looking, feeling nice and thin. The colors do look good. Everything looks in registry. Even the small writing um, is, is just almost readable, right? So really good top notch on the decals just there. Um, the instructions, you know, as usual with Airfix, a bit of a description just here. Let's bring you in a little bit closer. Um, you know, sort of general sort of standard quality paper, but we do have a bit of color. Ooh, and then we've also got some nice marking sheets just there, which is always a good one. <coughs> I'm going to quickly just run through this. It does look like, oh, well, that's quite nice. We have different sort of versions here. So how you sort of gear it out with different um, weapons, air, sea, rescue, counter piracy and anti surface warfare all right that's quite a nice one that was a bit different to the the one i had it's mainly the the big difference for you is just being navy um but yes we bring all the cockpit together which i do believe you know you could spend quite a bit of time messing about with the cockpit getting all this together there's different sort of seating patterns and stuff that you can have with this um and it does it's it's one of these is a helicopter you know you take a nice you, you, really you probably take more time with a helicopter really than you would with an aircraft because there's so much more open doors there's all the sort of cargo compartments and everything so you could really take a lot of time and i did remember taking a lot of time with um you know the cargo compartment and the, the cockpit area and everything uh, and it really does make a difference to be able to see in there have the doors open and all that cool cool stuff but yeah you bring the two sections together like you would with an aircraft by the looks of it um, and it's the nose section is very different to the navy uh, the the army version that i did um if you've if you watched the full version of that um you know that's where you sort of you know some of the big changes happen um, moving along just to see if we've got any sort of differences with this which I'm not sort of noticing much uh, I'm just gonna quickly go over it I mean yes the weapons are different right um, definitely the weapons are different there's a seems to be more options with this one than the 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 army version in all fairness right and yes oh yes I thought you could yes you can have your um the propellers and the, the rotors and stuff in a sort of a closed configuration and stuff stored storing it away so that's also a nice feature to go with it um does that mean you can have the tail folded as well i think you can it looks like you can let's have a have another look yeah it does yeah okay yeah you can have it folded if you want so that's quite nice you can have it all sort of folded up um moving along with uh, we have our looks like our stencil markings just just here right and they do seem to be sort of you know fairly clearly um able to see what it is all nicely in color so nice good quality paper we have the mark 88a um nice bit of german stuff there we have what we've got here as well we've got the danish navy air squadron as well as another color scheme as well as we have the Royal Navy as well and all their colour scheme. Um, nice couple of mo uh, um, options there which is rather rather cool. Let's throw this out the way. Uh, so there you have it. I mean it is a good kit. I have built it. Uh, no major major issues but there's a few sort of like niggly bits here and there. A bit of filling, bit of sanding. Um, but the decals are fantastic. The internal detail is pretty damn good. The surface detail is actually really really good for a airfix kit. Um, now other than that you know the price right you know this is the one thing that's starting to niggle me a little bit when it comes to airfix airfix i have noticed because i've run my own store has really over the past couple of years been putting those prices up and up 
and up um, and now this kit's 50 pounds right it's a good kit i remember when i first brought it back in 2014 or something eight years ago right the kit was about 30 35 pounds and now it's 50 pounds right it's getting a little bit crazy um it's kind of getting to the point where it's not kind of worth it right airfix is one of these companies that i find you know their two strongest points one is that they do sort of um, REF kind of Cold War kind of aircraft and they're the only ones who basically do it you know you've got things like the Vulcan the Hunter you know all those kind of Cold War kind of things so if you want to do those aircraft it's sort of like your only option really is to go to Airfix and, and, and that's their strong point. Um, the other one was, well, you know, it's Airfix, you know, they're not the best, but they're kind of like a cheap and cheerful company, right? But as I say, you know, the price rises that have been happening over the past couple of years is really making Airfix kind of expensive and kind of not worth it because they're not the best, um, if you get what I mean. Um, you know, and I might be just having a bit of a moan here, but seriously, you know, now I've been running my own store you know I do notice the price rises from all these different manufacturers and over the past couple of years you know I know there's been COVID and now we've got this whole thing going on in Russia and stuff right but there's manufacturers out there that haven't even changed their prices at all over this period and then there's a bunch that have but they've only done it a bit right but Airfix I have really really noticed these prices have just been happening i think one year over covid it happened twice in one year um it's been happening every single year there have been big price rises i think i remember the vulcan a couple of years ago was like 50 pounds and then just jumped all of a sudden to 55 pounds right um and as i say this kit used to be about 30 35 pounds going back eight years and now it's like 50 pounds right um it is getting expensive and airfix i do believe they they need to sort of be careful because they are sort of out that they're just overpricing things to the point where they are becoming not worth it because they've got to be careful they're not the best right as i say they've got two strong points and that cheap and cheerful thing is starting to not become cheap and cheerful it's becoming expensive for something that isn't the best so um sorry about the big moan but you know what it's one of them you know i'm just letting you guys know that you know Airfix needs to be a bit careful, but other than that, it is a good kit if you don't mind paying out the sort of hefty price that's coming along with these kits at the moment. Um, so um, hopefully um, you've enjoyed this um, um, inbox review. Hopefully I haven't put too much of a downer on it. Um, but apart from that, as always, until next time, my name is Bob Wardrow and this is Genesis Models, and I hope you don't mind a good moment.